just going to go over the rules right now because I already started. Um, so the setup is just going to be exactly like the guys. The clip will be shown. We will give our analysis and then we'll pass it to the next person who has not yet gone. Once everyone has shared their analysis, we will rewatch the clip and give any final comments. Um, the rules are you take turns so everyone gets a chance to speak. Please mute yourself when someone else is talking. Uh, do not speak over each other, as I've already said. Uh, and please keep your analysis somewhat short. When you are completed your analysis, please pass it to the next person. And uh, another really important rule is to have fun and remember to be respectful. And that's it. All right. Now, we've left a little something for you here at the end, a little gift. And it's uh, you watch it and you tell us what you think is going on here. And we'll check it out. That you did not commit these murders? Or the, the murder and the other crimes you were convicted of? Absolutely. I didn't commit them and I still maintain my innocence. Somebody in the road flagged us down. I stopped and got out of the got out of my car. And he said something to the effect of, I want your car. And I laughed at him. And I said, You've got to be kidding. Because in my mind, those kinds of things don't happen. In Arizona, those things don't happen. I don't know about Oregon, but in Arizona, those things don't happen. And so he jumped into the car, leaned into the car, and started firing the weapon. And it happened so quickly that by the time he stood up and faced me, it was over. I mean, it was just that fast. I, he said something about the car again, and I struggled with him. The gun discharged. He fell back. I jumped in the car, put the keys in the ignition, and took off. The car door shut by itself. That's it. And I went to the hospital. Christy and, Dan, uh, Christy and Danny were in the back seat. When we got to the hospital, they were still crying. Um, the nurses reported that they were still crying. The state says I that... I was the one that shot them and that I wanted them dead. If that was the case, I would not have taken to the hospital still crying. There are so many other ways to accomplish such a horrific deed if I was going to do it. I'm certainly bright enough to figure out another way besides some way that looks so absolutely insane and hokey that nobody would believe it. I'm not dumb. All right, um, Aaron, what do you got? I pulled a chase. She says absolutely and nods her head yes when she's asked if she committed this crime. Like right off the bat, she's like, absolutely. <laughs> um, the word somebody is pretty general. A truthful account would be more like a specific, you know, like a man. She was face to face with the guy, but somebody is just, um, who the heck is, this is, I'm just going to read from my notes. Who the heck is going to pull over, get out of the car in the middle of the night with kids in the car, let alone be, you know, what is she on the sightseeing back road tour at two o'clock in the morning? Uh, because a guy flies him down. Who, who's going to do that? Nobody. And um, so she said, I guess she, when she was talking about what happened with, with the man, she said, those kind of things don't happen. And that was a truthful statement. If they don't happen. <laughs> so she did tell the truth about that. Um, She's clueless about what a normal mother would do or feel or say. Like, she just has no idea. She has no emotions, no expressions of care or concern or remorse, nothing. So weird. Um, the state said that she was, she, I'm going to quote her because I have it in quotes. The state said, I was the one that shot them. I was the one that wanted them dead. And instead of straight up denying it, she goes on and on and on about um, that there are so many other ways she could accomplish it, accomplish it. And I thought that was an interesting, you know, way to phrase it, accomplish it. Because it, what was it, a goal of hers? 
ugh. Yeah, and then as as though she, you know she's had a lot of time to think while she's been in the can, so she's thinking of all the different ways she could have done it. And she goes ahead and she lists all the other ways she could have killed them if that's what she really wanted to do. It's like, come on. An innocent person would have said, I didn't shoot my babies, period. And on the human needs map, I couldn't identify her primary need, but her second secondary need is um, intelligence. And that's it, the great lesson on psychopathy. And that's it. That's what I got. All right, Adriana, what do you got? All right. So I got a few things, Aaron. I just wanted to tell you the whole absolutely thing. That one stuck out to me. It was like a big, massive red flag. But for me, it was almost like she was doing that whole, yes, we have no bananas, you know? But then again, when she said that final statement, when she had her head down, it was almost like she was signing her name. Like, nope, I didn't do it. And I remain, whatever, boom. And then she switches. So I thought that one was interesting. Um, let me see. For me this time, I wanted to do a little bit of the behavioral table of elements. A loose interpretation, my interpretation, because it's all a little scary. I don't want to get it all wrong. But here's a crack at it from me. Um, I counted 20 and I went back and forth with all the interpretations that I thought possible for some of these. And what I have is a lot of her statements are very ambiguous and which is a four point element. Another one I had was a chin thrust right at the very beginning where she says, absolutely. She puts her head right in the air, you know, and she just says with confidence, absolutely. You know, yes, we have banana no bananas. Um, she has a lot of vocal hesitancy throughout another four points, long pauses, weird breaths when making statements. It's almost like she forgets her statement or she doesn't start at a certain point. She has, she forgets it. And then she does multiple brush off statements um, that was just that. It was just over. But I see her doing these with her hands. It's the only reason why I say it. Um, she has non-answer statements, a lengthy one. I wouldn't have done it. I thought for a little while, maybe it was a resume statement, but not so much. Well, unless you consider her statement of saying she's not stupid. But I don't believe that. I believe it's just a non-answer statement of going into, it's not going to happen in my mind. You know, So one, doesn't happen in my mind doesn't happen in Arizona. And then third, I don't know about you people in Oregon, but you know, she just distances herself from the situation and says, hey, Oregon, it's your fault. It's not possible for me. That was one of her statements. Um, let me see here. The only other one that I noticed that was really big for me that I actually added that into my score for the behavioral table of elements that was not a four point element. Um, I'll just go over the ones I got again. It was ambiguity, ambiguity, I can't even say that word, statements, pin thrust, vocal hesitancy, and non-answer, which adds to 20 points. And then, because it was so important, when she was speaking about her kids in the car, and she said that the nurses said they were crying, I noticed she distanced herself from that one because she had said they were crying. Oh, wait, no, the nurses said they were crying, but um, she had her head downcast the whole time she was talking about her kids. The whole time she has her head pointed down talking about them, maybe shame, I'm not really sure, but then she brings her head back up to says, I'm not stupid, or that final statement of, I don't even remember what it was, but uh, yeah, that's what I got for that. 22 points only with those, but I had to add the downcast because it stuck out to me. What I have is, um, she says, I maintain my innocence, um, which is after years and years. Um, she's still like, I maintain my, my innocence is not strong, reliable denial. Uh, she could have said, I didn't kill my children. I didn't shoot them. Um, but even after years, she still cannot say that. And innocence, innocence about what? It's very general. It can be anything else. Like two of them didn't die. So I was innocent of that. Um, apart from that... There is um, a lot of hiding time, I can see, and, and I, and so, um, but when she said, and I laughed at him, and then said, you've got to be kidding me, in a Mickey Mouse kind of voice, be scared for your kids, but you laugh. So this is not a person who can um, um, process emotions normally, because you wouldn't laugh. Mm -hmm. um, and also kids were crying, crying, crying. They weren't scared. They weren't hurt. They were just crying. So again, there is no emotions there. She doesn't know how to um, process the emotion. Um, 
So again, at the end, thank you, Peter Hyatt, when she said, I'm not dumb, dumb, uh, dumb is not um, a word that was told to her. So she's the one who's introducing the word. But it's in her mind. She thinks she's dumb and she's like, damn, what did I do? She's angry at herself. And again, vanishing perpetrator. Why say all this rather than say, that was the man. No, that was me. Um, but she's still saying that if it was me, I would have done this and that. No, there is another man there who did that if there was. Mm. So it would have been much easier to say that. So yeah, that's it for me. And I'm going to pass it to um, Rachel. What do you got? Um, yeah, I feel like a bit of a, a duster because I haven't really done my homework. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but I'll just go with what jumped out. Um, I jumped out with it was it's kind of what everyone else has said, like the absolutely she said that twice, I think, and it was it was wrongly placed. It didn't make sense when she when she said it. Um, and the somebody when she was speaking about the prop perpetrator, she's like somebody, <laughs> like what? The somebody, like really? Um, I thought that was interesting. The car door shut. What I felt like what she was saying about her story was that it was really rehearsed. Obviously she's had like years and years to rehearse the story and she said it so many times. But also like as if there was um, a recent conversation of doubt that she had had, I'm like totally speculating here because it just felt like she had a point to make um, where she had put in the car door shut by itself as she was driving nobody asked her about the car door. And it was as if she had to explain that weird thing that the car door is shut by itself it was like, Okay, um, you know, it's like, I didn't take the chocolate bar over there that's, you know, in the chocolate biscuit tin. Nobody asked you if you did. <laughs> and so I felt that was kind of weird. Um, the still crying, she said that twice again, and I thought that was kind of weird as well. Kids were still crying. And again, that was like a, a prefix, there's pro a probably a different word to use, but like a prologue, is that probably the word, to like... A, a story further down her story that she had to inject that into the conversation they were still crying because somebody's accused her of something else and lo and behold at the end of the clip then she brings it back in again about what the nurses said that the kids were still crying um, and then again she says I'm not dumb um, I, I thought that was interesting this is about how she looks as well she's kind of trying to maintain what she looks like and um yeah, that's it. That's more concerned about her story than about her kids and no emotion again. Like, whoa, um, really interesting, really in interesting intonation in her words, the way she's kind of talking. And then I just, as I was taking my mouth out of my food, <laughs> stuffing my face, I just saw the last breath and she had a big inhale in whatever she said at the last thing, like I'm not dumb or something. She did a big breath in, but I didn't actually really look at her body language. And it's hard, isn't it? Because her face is kind of skewed. It's such old footage, it's hard to see. So um, hands up who was not there on Tuesday. Two things strike me. The first thing is these magical items in her story where the magical gun goes off by itself and the magical car door closes by itself. Um, the other thing is, um, as a mother, if somebody flagged me down um, on a deserted road in the evening and I had kids in the car, first of all, I wouldn't stop. Second of all, I wouldn't get out of my car to see what this person wanted from me and leave my kids unprotected in the car. And then there's a total logical flaw where she transitions with lost time using the and then, uh, where he just kind of pops his head in the car and kind of bam, 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 shoots her kids. Now, if I were the villain of that story, why would I shoot the kids and not her? If I want the car, I would shoot the driver, get in the car, either keep the kids in the car or get them out of the car or shoot them, but I would definitely get rid of the adult first. Uh, I would also make an effort to disarm him if I were the mother in that situation. So that also doesn't make sense. Um, the way she presents her story is uh, using a lot of distancing language. 
uh, it sort of creates her as a neutral observer, not a participant in what's happening. And there's very, very little focus on, oh my God, this person killed my kids. And you still keep thinking it's me. So none of the content makes sense logically. Um, if you look at content analysis, the embedded confession pretty much tells us exactly what happened. Um, she's saying, God, I was so stupid that I didn't think about the fact that the kids might survive and still be crying. You could tell them it was me. Uh, she was going to take him to the hospital as corpses and said, look, somebody did this and there was nothing I could do. Um, that failed. She's still kicking herself about it because that kills her entire story that she had created. So without going into the minutia of her expression, she doesn't have a lot of expression. She doesn't use much body language. Um, she's sitting in front of a panel that's judging her. She's hyper aware of herself. Um, she still has that defiant tone, uh, slightly chin jutting to show her superiority over everybody else. She thinks she's smarter than everybody. Unfortunately, that is not true. So um, not as technical, and you probably mentioned all my points already, but that's what I got from seeing it. You know, we're really learning some stuff. Like we're for real, like learning. <laughs> it's awesome. Yay! <laughs> and this, uh, what do you got? What really concerned me uh, most was the I am not. Falls like a stone, you know, that's the men's statement. Uh, I'm, I am not dumb. I can't have been, I can't have done that. In the process of all that, she got shot by the by the guy which she she normally has been so i thought that was one detail one big detail that she missed out uh i didn't see much um behavior but some um, sort of mo movement uh of her body at all uh she was kind of stiff um and she it was like a robotic talking um like and the fact also the fact that she said that she arrived at the hospital and the the, the children um were still crying so you know they, they were still crying so i i can't have been willing to kill them that's not possible because they were crying I put myself in, in, in the place of that woman. And I thought, I thought at, at that time, if, if someone was like by the road, looking perfectly fine, uh, I would have never stopped. You just walk wherever you want to, but I am not stopping. I've got two babies in my car. I am not stopping. If you are bleeding, maybe if there is an accident nearby maybe but if you look perfectly fine i'm sorry you walk and i'm just driving driving away i'm not i'm not stopping for any stranger like that she's she her story is i'm sorry but she, that, that, no it doesn't have it doesn't happen in oregon it doesn't happen in Arizona, and apparently it doesn't happen in France. That's it. <laughs> she doesn't realize how absurd that story is. It is. There's just so much here. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I didn't even know where to start. I think it's extremely suspicious that she shows no emotion whatsoever. Uh, no sadness, no fear, no anger, no surprise, as you would have if you were in that kind of situation. Except, I think, uh, at the end, where she says, I'm not dumb, then you can see some sort of uh, emotion. Her story is uh, really chronological. Uh, I think that that's a major red flag. I think you, you would sort of start with the emotional part first. Uh, 
I would, it would have been really fun to hear her telling the story in reverse, I think. <laughs> There's just way too much detail as well. She gets into the tiniest details, like that funny door, the keys, but then there's no mention of the actual shooting at all. Uh, not the kids being hit, not her being hit. Uh, there's just a lot of missing time. Um, and it's very strange. I think Greg said once that the truth needs no support, but a lie needs a crutch. And there's sort of, certainly a lot of crutches here. <laughs> Uh, I think she's also trying to be the hero of her own story. She starts laughing at the, um, at the, the carjacker. And I think that's more her wanting to be the hero than her not um, sort of uh, knowing what emotion to, to put in. Um, she's also uh, sort of like, like kids do when they make up their fake stories, uh, blah, 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 and then it was over. <laughs> Just a really weird end to, to the whole uh, ordeal. And uh, we have a sort of a, a new Prince Andrew in the Navy, a sort of in Arizona, this is not normal. Like the whole, in the Navy, we, we do this uh, and that. And um, uh, yeah, uh, there's just, uh, like she, she said that herself, there's holes in here that you could drive a semi-truck through. She said another party in this interview, and that's so certainly true. Um, yeah, that, that's sort of the, um, the biggest flags for me, but there's certainly a lot of them. And I also think, because you see hardly no body language at all. She's just totally frozen. But then a few times when she actually describes what, what happens, I'm wondering if she she's describing what did happen sort of from the perpetrator point of view, um, that um, uh, uh, the kids, they fall back. She leans forward, but except it's, it's in reverse because you do see her a few times actually moving her bodies, but not very, uh, not very much. So I'm wondering if, if that's actually sort of true parts, but it's in reverse what she did when she did shoot uh, the children. Um, that's all I have. Hey, my oh my God. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, oh my God. Holy crap. Uh, hi. Oh, hi, this was Cheers. supposed to be a, uh, a pyramid scheme meeting for my makeup business. <laughs> what a treat yay that's awesome i can't Baby meet texted myself. me that you guys were on a zoom so i said i'll just bomb it oh my gosh that's so cool <laughs> god i'm glad i went already because now i got like performance anxiety <laughs> <laughs> this is insane i didn't even know that there was there was like meetings and stuff Oh yeah, this we analyzed great. just like you guys did. We're showing off what we learned. You're like weaponizing us, Chase. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Oh my god. I'm I gonna haven't meet myself even gotten dressed for the day, and uh, haven't even shaved. So I just figured I'd jump <laughs> jump right in. Oh my god! Uh, thank you so much. That's so cool. Yeah. So Chase, are you gonna have a go? At what? Yes, you should tell us what you see in the video that we're analyzing. Okay. That you did not commit these murders? Or the, the murder and the other crimes you were convicted of? Absolutely. I didn't commit them and I still maintain my innocence. Somebody in the road flagged us down. I stopped and got out of, the, got out of my car. And he said something to the effect of, I want your car. And I laughed at him. And I said, you've got to be kidding, because in my mind, those kinds of things don't happen. In Arizona, those things don't happen. I don't know about Oregon, but in Arizona, those things don't happen. And so he jumped into the car, leaned into the car, and started firing the weapon. And it happened so quickly that by the time he stood up and faced me, it was over. I mean, it was just that fast. I, he said something about the car again, and I struggled with him. The gun discharged. He fell back. I jumped in the car. 
put the keys in the ignition and took off the car door shut by itself that's it and I went to the hospital Christy and Dan uh, Christy and Danny were in the back seat when we got to the hospital they were still crying um, the nurses reported that they were still crying the state says I that I was the one that shot them and that I wanted them dead if that was the case I would not have taken to the hospital still crying there are so many other ways to accomplish such a horrific deed if I was going to do it I'm certainly bright enough to figure out another way besides some way that looks so absolutely insane and hokey that nobody would believe it I'm not dumb yes you are okay uh, so this one I really wanted to do but <laughs> We had been filming so long, we had a meeting before we filmed this episode, and I think I had a couple of vodka tonics. Uh, so we were getting, uh, we were going to cut it short. So I think uh, in this one, it's really great that the first thing that's in there that we have never talked about on the panel before was this elbow that kind of like shoots out like away from her body while she's talking about something. This is called a pugilistic gesture, and it was first researched 1972 by Desmond Morris. And this, you'll see it, uh, a great example, if you go to YouTube and you type in Obama, you lie. So Obama's giving a, a speech to the House, uh, House of Representatives one day, and somebody from the back, from like the nosebleeds, screams out, you lie really loud, and you'll see the same little pugilistic gesture. So this is kind of an aggressive disagreement. And just like when we see someone like put their chin up to go into a fight or like they're getting ready to fight, this is also, we have, a, we have an artery down here called the brachial. And it's the same thing, a small exposure of an artery, which is how I view it anyway. This is not Desmond, but we're doing the same thing with our neck. So that's a really cool behavior. And the final thing that she says here when she says, I'm not dumb, I think this goes way back to what I said uh, on our episode. All the criminals in all the shows that I said her life was made up of all these like Perry Mason and all this other crap that she's watching on TV back in this day. All the criminals are stupid in these episodes. They're all dumb. Even in Columbo, there might be intelligence, but their ego makes them stupid. So... I think that her defense is I'm not one of those people because that's how she views criminals uh, to begin with. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. Right when she says, uh, I don't remember what it was, but there's some direct chronology in there. And if you think about this, they didn't ask. They didn't ask her the answer that she provided. Which means that when a person tells an emotional story, the emotional part usually comes first. Like, so like if you got into a car accident and you called your friend and your friend's like, hey, what's going on? You're not going to say, well, I got up at 7 a.m. I brushed my teeth, made some coffee and then walked through the whole story like she did here. So that's, that chronology is really important. If you ever want to trip somebody up, you have them rehearse the story or tell you the story from the end backwards using calculated questioning. Because you've said the alphabet, for example, 50,000 times, but we still have a tremendous amount of difficulty saying it backwards. And when she says, uh, somebody in the road, when we are familiar with any human, we will say that man or the man in the road. So somebody is suggestive, like storytelling and stuff like that. And when she's saying those things don't happen in this video clip in particular, she's managing disbelief by identifying with skepticism of other people. So she's saying, I'm as equally skeptical as you are, and I'm kind of like you. And I think when he, she says something about jumping in and leaning into the car, I think this was a mistake in her story. And she went back to kind of edit that. But one of the questions I always ask myself is how comfortable is this person with flawed memory? Flawed memory is always okay to truthful people, but getting every single detail precise uh, is a big deal to, especially to people that are telling stories. And when she says uh, it was over, there's no crime, there's no killing, there's no injuring babies, there's no emotion, nothing there, which is super weird. 
But when she says her kids' names here, her head's downcast. The humorous kind of tucks in. There's hesitation. And I think it's interesting that she says accomplish to, to describe the way that she could have killed this person. And there's some distancing there. I think she uses the word deed or deeds, plural, one of those. I thought this was a fascinating take. So all of us, you know, we have like 15 minutes worth of data that we have in every episode. And we just, you know, we start the thing off and we're like, all right, let's keep this one down to three minutes per person. And then, you know, Mark gets on there and just like goes into this uh, like story structure stuff, which I love. I learn a lot. I, you'll see me taking notes during our episode. It's usually when Mark's talking, but uh, that's, uh, that's all I got. Sadie, what do you got? oh my gosh this is like the coolest thing ever <laughs> i noticed like everyone on here is like just like bursting and just like just smiling constantly because they're just like holy crap can't believe chase hughes is in our call right now <laughs> i was going to say that i, I, I just uh, left two minutes and 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 then there's chase oh my god <laughs> i wasn't sure chase, it was chase, like. may i ask you a question yes hey Aaron. when i when I was um, analyzing it, that very end on the human needs map, I couldn't identify what her primary need was, but I found her secondary need to be intelligence. Does that sound right to you? Yes. And what would you pick for her primary need? Definitely significance. Thank so you. So there's no, she never uses team pronouns uh, or very, oh, okay. very rarely. So she typically defaults to I and me, even though she's talking about a car full of kids. And when she was being slightly truthful, she she used one team pronoun. If I recall, she said, we like to take back roads or we like to go up, you know, in, in the off the road or whatever she said. Great. But I, I would default to significance. And I would say approval is out of the question because she murders human beings without permission. So. Chase, could I ask you a question? Yes, who's that? Uh, Len. Len, hey, how are you? <laughs> Good, great to see you. Uh, I was wondering, uh, I noticed this uh, um, elbow thing when she said absolutely. And I seem to remember, does Trump do that during some of his speeches? A lot of politicians do. And it's typically when you're, when you're going to see uh, disagreement or anger at having to do something. So like when we talked about Obama doing it, it was his anger probably at having to control himself. Thanks, so. Thank you. And somebody's got a, is that a periodic table or a behavioral table? Oh yeah, you gotta talk to Adriana. Periodic table, 100%. It's periodic not behavior. table. <laughs> no, no, it is very much true. so. It, it is very is. much so behavioral table of elements. That is badass, by the way. I, that is no, the you're coolest badass. I've seen. <laughs> That's the coolest I've seen. There was a guy in Germany who made it into a shower curtain that I thought was pretty cool. Doing it, doing it, thanks, doing it. I do have one question about your book. I noticed that gesture absent, there is no definition in the book. A gestural absence, uh, people usually ask what the difference between that and a, and a gesture freezing is. So gestural absence is basically like you're talking to a stick. A freeze would mean that there was some movement that stopped, suddenly stopped. So all movement comes to a stop. So there was movement and then it stops. And that typically happens while you're asking a person a question. When the topic comes up, they finally realize what the question is about. That's when you'll see a freeze versus absence. So I noticed right away that she sees somebody in the road flagging them down while she's driving in like the middle of the night to do some sightseeing um guy says i want your car she laughs at him saying you gotta be kidding he jumps slash leans which is it she doesn't even know into the car and started firing the weapon then he stands up and faces her but then she grunts do you hear that grunt you heard that grunt she goes Ugh. and then i think what the grunt is is that she realizes that she has basically sped through her entire story and she's realized that she's made an error in where she is in this story because she had gotten out of the car and the way that she said that he jumps or leans into the car made it seem like she was, well, like, where was she during all of this, first of all? But that grunt, she's like, 
um, she realizes that she she messed up her story. Then she backtracks to include her valiantly struggling with this guy, um, which is when the gun is then discharged. The second time around is actually, you know, um, there's no mention of her being shot. There's no mention throughout this entire time of her daughter, Cheryl, like she mentioned Danny and what was the other one? I can't remember. Um, the, the, the other... Christy. Christy. Christy, thank you. Um, mentions those two, but like not even a mention of the third child, the one that passed away, which is just like, as a parent, like, holy... Anyway, um, horrific deed, she says, uh, which has already been mentioned. Um, this whole thing, um, okay, sorry, I'm just like trying to find my place. Um, I think she hates the fact that she, that this is the story that she came up with, um, because I think that she wishes that it was something, that she had come up with something smarter, because I think that she thought that she had a really concrete plan, like she was like, man, this is foolproof, I'm gonna, you know, do this, and, and no one is gonna question it, and, um, she, yeah, uh, she realized that her story looked so absolute. this is her words, so absolutely insane and hokey that nobody would believe it. I'm certainly bright enough to figure out another way. I'm not dumb. She is dumb. And how is she, and now she is trying to convince herself and everyone around that she isn't. So that's what I got. <laughs> um, Kate, what do you got? <clears throat> totally okay and confident <clears throat> okay so okay so you pretty much covered a lot of what I covered but I will I'll give it a whirl all right so I'm hearing a lot of distancing language and straight out of the gate as Scott would say I reckon okay this absolutely I that chin thrust it's like please um you just that's an arrogant thing I that uh, just that stuck out a million miles to me. Um, so there's distancing language in horrific deed, firing the weapon, gun discharged. Um, sorry, if something happens like that to your kids, you think someone shot at my kids. There's this, this, you know, this man shot at my kids. This monster shot at my kids. You don't, you don't start the gun discharged. The a hole shot me in the arm. I'm sorry. There's just it doesn't add up. This person has no connection to emotion. If this actually happened, there'd be some sort of connection there. I don't. So straight away, I'm not buying that. Um, so this whole guys, real quick, yeah, I've got to, I've got to run. Run, uh, Chase, run downstairs. If you've noticed an increased blink rate in me in the last few weeks, I just had eye surgery, so <laughs> I have to put these drops in that are not lubricating drops. They burn like hell. Oh man! Uh, so it sucks. It was a LASIK surgery. So oh nice. Oh, I hope you feel better Good for you. Get better, Chase. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. guys. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Bye. 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 Okay, so with this whole still crying, and she uses the nurses reported that. I think this is her using somebody else to back up her message here. The nurses reported that they're still crying. So I think there's there's this sort of narrative, but as she gets further and further through her story, I think her pronouns and her narrative fall apart at the same time. I, he, she starts to really fall apart when she's, she's, there's more hiding time. There's more awkwardness. There's this big sort of, oh, whether it's a, I can't believe I'm doing this again, or I can't believe this is the story I came up with because I am so dumb. I'm not entirely sure what process is going on, but either way, She's fed up. She's she's annoyed. But I, again, I said this on my last analysis, but I tried to sketch this out, as in really genuinely tried to sketch this story out. And it looked like absolute tripe because the, it does not make any sense. Um, so anyway, the thing that really bothered me, and it it's this, it's the name thing, it's Sadie touched on this as well. She didn't mention the daughter that died um, by name at all. It was almost as if there were only two children in the car. But there was also 
this Dan Danny. She corrected Dan to Danny. Now this really bothers me because when I talk about say, okay, I have a little guy called Liam. Now we also call him Ladling. Now this is just because of it. It went from my little duckling to my little lad to my Ladling. Okay, so it's, it's an endearment, if you will. Okay, he's nine. I still call him Ladling. But when I'm talking about him to other people, I'll sort of say Ladling, uh, Liam, if I'm talking to the school or a doctor or whatever, anyone outside that doesn't know this endearment. Okay, so there's the softening and then the correction to the formal. She did it the opposite of way, the opposite way around. She said, Dan, Danny. There was Dan and then a softening. Danny's softer than Dan. And that bothered me. It's, it's just, again, it's, it's another example, um, a more subtle example of this. That's just not mum. Do you know, the, in the same way that none of this, you wouldn't get out of the car. You wouldn't be out in the middle of the night with your children unless you're trying desperately to get your baby to sleep and it's 3 a.m. You just... There are so many things that you just wouldn't as a mum. These things don't make sense. So the name really stood out to me. Um, I think uh, everything else I've got here seems to have been covered really well, as I say. And as I say, there was a cartoon strip and it's ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous. As it goes along, each square changes detail and loses more detail and falls apart as it goes along as does her story. So yeah, that's all I got for you. So. Good job. I'm so glad you kept going, Kate. Um, hey, I had one more thing. Um, it's, it's really burning in the back of my head that I got to say this. Um, when she's talking about um, driving to the hospital and the kids are crying, they're crying. I think what she's really saying is, oh, she was so annoyed at the crying the kids in the car were making all that noise when she just wanted to be left alone because she has that really annoyed tone to her voice um and then i think she realizes that she does sound annoyed about her dying children crying and so she brings in the nurse and sort of handed the role of the observer over to her as she is the one who reports to her that they're crying she would have known that if they were crying all the way to the hospital she wouldn't need a nurse to tell her that so again i think she just doesn't um know what emotions are and how she should be reacting to those situations. I just had to say that. Why, yeah. if she was um, wanting her kids dead, why did she bring them to the hospital? It was said that she has been seen driving uh, to the hospital, but very slowly. So uh, she was Back trying to, to make sure that they would be dead by the time she arrives. Please, out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, Rachel, I think I think it's for her story. She went to the hospital because she wants to be seen as a mother trying to save her children. One thing that I noticed was that when she said that they got to the hospital and they were still crying, um, she shakes her head no, as if she's remembering that that was a problem for her back then. Mm. They they are still crying, like damn it, you know. Yeah. I think it's. It's part of her defense, because she says that me actually doing this is so insane and hooky that why would I do this? Why would I actually drive to the hospital with them? But I think um, she sort of thought they would die. So uh, little, <laughs> little um, wrong in her uh, plan there. But I think that was her, her really evil plan. I just want to say one more thing about these pronouns and the changing words. Dan becomes Denny, weapon becomes gun, um, I, he. And then there is like when he's talking about, when she's talking about he, um, she doesn't use he a lot. So it's kind of like he jumped into the car, leaned into the car and started firing the weapon. So when it's being fired, it's a weapon. But like when it miraculously fire itself, it's a gun. Um, I just want to quote Peter Heyer quickly. <laughs> um, he says that everybody has a personal dictionary, like, um, and there are no synonyms in it. So did I say cinnamon or synonym? <laughs> synonym? I, I think you said cinnamon. <laughs> cinnamon. You're right. Sorry. You're right. <laughs> Sorry. Like, for example, like with me and um, my fiance, when, when he's babe, we're good. When he's Alex, there is something bad. There are no synonyms. <laughs> 
<laughs> like when he's going like you cannot substitute words you cannot sub substitute weapon with a gun there is a reason why it became became a gun and also then became denny i think it's because like she's trying to look like a nice mother and also with the um the pronouns i he it doesn't make sense like it's not it's not a mistake he, she wanted to say, I did this then, and she was like, he. So it was very quick as well, I, he. So um, that's it. And when Chase was here, I wanted to say these, but I'm glad I, I'm, I didn't because I had no language, not at all. And then, like, I had this <laughs> twitch, twitch on right arm here. Obviously, it's professional scientific name is um, pugilistic gesture, but I just wrote twitch. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't say it. So, <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I watched this uh, Oprah show with uh, Diane Downs on it. And uh, Oprah asks her, so you know, a lot of people are wondering, why didn't you get hysterical when this happened? And she answers, and this is just sort of bone chilling, I think, as a mom. She says, it wasn't like going to the baseball field and having hot dogs and popcorn and watching or something. And then she goes on. And then I thought, oh my God, I just have to take a break like Chase did and, and watch some nice videos because this yeah. is just absolutely horrific. I can't mm. believe it. It just, yeah, I just want to cry. Yeah, I think the skills we're learning from the behavior panel will benefit not just us, but also people touched by us. And mm. we're going to in turn teach these things to other people and um, put it out there and sort of be ambassadors for the value there is in learning about inner human behavior and how we can understand each other better because communication is so difficult it has like a sender and a receiver and then there's all the static in the middle and if we can learn to look at like sort of the pillars of communication through body language and content and all of that not only can we catch liars but we can also sort of catch truth and help raise each other up and support each other in a better way yeah like chase use it says, for good like chase says yeah we're raised by lifting each other and, and learning these things will help us do that and it'll also help us um pass it on seriously i i'm so proud of everybody yeah. i think we actually picked up on a lot of the stuff that he was saying so that yes. was really yes. cool. especially you Lama. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. We did so well. Like, yeah, I'm so honestly. proud of us. Yay, us, because yeah. we look at how we're learning. Yes, we're totally look how learning. much we're learning. This is incredible. It's, crazy. it's nice because we can like just chat amongst ourselves and just kind of like talk about the stuff that we've learned. Because this is really like this is this is really great. Like this is I could go like I could go on about this stuff for hours. And there's you know it's just nice being able to. Find a community that we can do that. It's well, been I, wonderful. I, I, oh, I right. need to Bye, go everybody. Put baby in bed. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.